So I want to tell you about when I first moved here uh, to Philadelphia. It was Labor Day weekend of 1992, and I was coming to Philly to start architecture school. And I had been uh, getting prepared, and I went to the local Ryder store, and I got a, arranged a truck to pick up on Saturday morning. And I said, I just need a small truck, a 10 by 10 truck, and I'll be good to go. And I went Saturday morning and waiting in line, lots of people, and I thought, I'm really, really good that I reserved a truck today. Got up there, and the guy said, yeah, sorry, pal, we gave away your truck. But not to worry, you can have that one. And he points over to this 24-foot truck with mom's attic. And I go ahead and get that thing and drive it back to my home up there and uh, loaded up my stuff. My stuff was to about that point in the back of the truck. Um, you know, maybe about three feet. And had a desk and a couple things, very low. So I start driving south, and I have a fiancé with me. I had a Japanese girlfriend, fiancé, who was coming to visit with me that summer. And I also had in the chase car, I had my brother who was doing nothing in his life, and he said, sure, I'll drive to Philly. So we all went in this caravan, headed south. Now, the, um, the girlfriend's fiance's uh, brother was flying in from Japan. He'd never been to America before, and he was flying into JFK. So I'm coming from basically north of Albany to Philly. And I, you know, in a relationship, you feel like you have to know what you're doing, or at least give that impression that you know what you're doing. So I said, sure, you can just take the airport shuttle and get out to JFK and meet your brother and everything's gonna be cool. However, we got on the road late and I'm beginning to get anxious. Now, the, another detail, important detail is, I grew up in Princeton, New Jersey. So for me, taking the airport shuttle means taking the airport shuttle. There's only one airport shuttle. It's from Princeton. And it goes from Princeton to JFK. Now, only when thinking today, I thought, actually, there's probably an airport shuttle right out of uh, Albany. But I didn't think of that. I said, I'm going to get you to Princeton, put you on this airport shuttle, and it'll take you out to JFK. So she's good. But we're running late. And she's starting to get fidgety and anxious beside me. And said, Dave, aren't we going to make it? So I'm thinking, like, what would a guy who knows what the hell he's doing, what would he do? <laughs> and I said, ah, oh, the airport shuttle doesn't go to JFK only. It also goes to Newark. So it goes Princeton to Newark to JFK. So I said, I'll drop you off at Newark Airport. And everything will be good. You can get the thing, you can meet your brother, I'll go down to Philly, get the stuff unloaded, everything will be cool. We have a plan. <laughs> Meanwhile, I don't want to let on to her that I'm kind of anxious because the only time I've been to Newark Airport was on the airport shuttle. <laughs> so I've never driven there myself. And now I'm driving in this truck. Like, where am I supposed to go? And so it's with great relief that out of the corner of my eye, I'm on this little loop road at the airport. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this building. It's like, that's the place. That's the place where the airport shuttle stops. Yes, this is it. And then, you know, trying to hold back the smile because now I'm in control. And she asked me, Dave, are you okay? <laughs> Just there, the road dipped down under the runway. And there was this overpass, seven foot clearance and a nine foot truck. So I was firmly, rather the truck, was firmly lodged under the, under the bridge. She starts crying. I've never been in a car accident before. I said, yeah, sorry. So, <laughs> so my brother's in the chase car, thank heavens he's there. So he gets her tears and all, and runs her over to the place to get on the, the shuttle to go out to JFK, and then comes back. Meanwhile, I told the, um, the um, folks there, I gotta go call um, Ryder and tell them that I've crashed their truck. <laughs> and as I'm going in, I make the phone call, and then I come back, and I'm coming over this berm down into this place where I'd driven my truck down into the hollow and there's the rent-a-cop on the top. Nice. Because <laughs> just this truck sticking out from under a bridge. In any case, we waited for, um, when Ryder had said, we'll send the tow truck out to get you guys. We're gonna get you in another truck and get you to Philly. Everything's gonna be cool. 
good. They grab this thing by the back. <laughs> Perhaps not dissimilar to the uh, butt plug you were talking about. <laughs> it, 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 I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, in any case, they start towing this thing, and of course, up in North Jersey, it's just miles, like lots of lanes of traffic, and my brother and I are following this truck, and the truck's looking at us, you know, with the whole backs are ripped open, and the, the guy pulls over on the side of the road up on the highway. Oh, shucks, I'm out of time, but you'll want to hear this. <laughs> The guy pulls over, do you want anything out of the truck? I say, well, no, I'll wait and I'll get it there. And uh, so anyway, I follow him along and he pulls up through this big fence and on the side of the fence is the sign that's the same logo that's on the side of the truck and there's not a rider truck in sight. We take the truck inside and ask, where's the truck? And he said, oh, well, that's why I was pulled you over was to tell you that we couldn't find you a truck. So we're just gonna keep it in this place over the weekend and you can come pick it up on Tuesday morning. And I said, well, I'm starting graduate school at nine o'clock Tuesday morning in Philly. You know, what am I supposed to do? So in any case, I'll try to make this short. Tried to open the truck. Eventually I got another truck. A guy stole the regional manager, stole the truck, came to this place. I brought it alongside, went to open the back of the truck and the whole door went <laughs> jammed. It's starting to now turn more colors. Um, <laughs> the thing jammed and it only went two feet so I couldn't get my stuff out. And I said, I'm gonna pass it up through the hole in the roof. And then it wouldn't, that was exhausting. So then I'd just seen the silence of the lambs and uh, Agent Starling went to um, Buffalo Bill's storage locker and the thing wouldn't open and she got a jack from the car and went <laughs> opened the jack, opened the door. So we did that, opened up the back of the truck, got the rest of my stuff out, put it in the back of the truck and drove it to Philly. And I unloaded my things and I went to the Ryder dealership and left it, you know, just dropped the keys. And um, <laughs> because here's a truck that's been stolen from another dealership <laughs> and has no paperwork and I dropped it there and ran away. And I called Ryder and they said, thank you for choosing Ryder. And I said, no, no, thank you. So I did, I was wise to choose the insurance. The insurance didn't quite work on the relationship, I'm sorry. But the, the uh, insurance did cover all the damage on the truck and I remained in Philly and she went back to Japan. Anyway, that's my story.